All right, hello and good morning, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Lifelong Learning for All, Leveraging the Power of the Open Web. Uh, my name is Courtney Brown, and I'm the Southeast Regional Coordinator from the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I'll be the host and question moderator today. Our presenter this morning is Julia Huprick, Director of Curation, um, Curation Strategy at Intellum. I'd like to start off the webinar with a few announcements. To register for other webinar, webinars or trainings available from the Professional Development Office, please see the Indiana State Library's events calendar, which can be found on our website at www.in.gov library. For a full list of our current in-person training menu, please see our continuing education website. The Indiana State Library has many ways we try to stay connected to library staff across the state. For weekly updates on upcoming trainings and to learn more about what's happening in libraries across the state, please subscribe to our weekly e-newsletter, The Wednesday Word. We also offer a blog which provides information about the Indiana State Collection, interview spotlights on library staff from across the state, and information about upcoming events at the Indiana State Library. If you have a question, just type it in the chat box on the upper left side of the screen. I'll be watching and I'll get your question to Julia as soon as there's a good opportunity. There should also be time for questions near the end. Um, this session is about an hour, so you'll get one LEU for today. Um, after the presentation has ended, please stay logged in to receive your LEU. I'll also be posting a link to a survey about the presentation, so please fill out that survey and let us know how we're doing. So again, please stay logged in at the end of the presentation for access to your LEU and the survey link. If you're watching an archived recording of this webinar, instructions on how to obtain your LEU are in the video's description. If at any point during the webinar you experience any sound issues, please see the sound issues box just below the chat box on the left side of the screen. If there's a global sound issue, we will announce it in that chat box. If you're unable to resolve the sound issues you're experiencing, we are recording this meeting and you can watch it online after it is ended. So again, if there is a global sound issue, we will make an announcement in the chat box. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Julia. Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, sounds great. Excellent, thank you. Um, thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, I'm really excited to share with you a project that I've been working on for the past uh, couple of years, and I think it presents a really interesting opportunity for librarians, for trainers, for anyone who's interested in sharing information. So, and that project is called Cat Cat. So, um, we'll get started here. I just want to, uh, oh, I'll share with you a picture of myself. Um, I am the Vice President of uh, Learning Initiatives at Intellum, which is a company headquartered in Atlanta. Uh, we provide e-learning and employee engagement solutions for companies like Google and Facebook and Pinterest. And if you've used a platform called Facebook Blueprint, for example, um, this is our product. We build learning management solutions. We build um, like a social media tool. We have a gamification platform as well. Um, and so uh, we've really, we've been in this space for about 18 years. And one of the things that we've seen has been the fact that our clients uh, need content. Our, our clients are organizations that uh, provide training for their employees. And in, in most cases, uh, the training staff have a hard time keeping up with uh, the amount of content that is needed to support a full staff-wide training program. So kind of at the same time that we were experiencing or helping our clients as they experienced that problem, uh, we also realized that we had an opportunity. Because we find free, high quality content that enhances our clients' training programs, um, we also realized that the collection of content that we were putting together, that we were compiling, would be excellent for the rest of the world. 
right? So there's a ton of really great content online. It's one of the things that we believe in. Um, we believe that everyone should have access to all of this free, high quality content, whether it's a TED talk or a blog post or a, a podcast. Um, and so when we're when we were looking for this content for our clients um, and, and putting that collection together, we realized that we had an opportunity to make it available for the public. And so uh, that's what we did. Um, the problem that we saw was that people were having a hard time finding the content that they needed online. They weren't always going to librarians. They weren't always um, using great search strategies. Um, they weren't always information literate necessarily. Um, and so they needed some help in that in that area. And so the platform that we built, which again is called CatCat, uh, is kind of our solution to that problem. So without further ado, I will unveil CatCat. And so I know it's uh, it's kind of hard not to go to catcat.com right now, but um, I would ask that you just kind of follow along with me and uh, and and uh, kind of put a pause on your curiosity because um, I know I would want to just go ahead and click on CatCat and then and then visit and, and explore and everything. So I'm going to give you a little demo of the site, a little tour. So what we've done on this site is we've compiled courses that are comprised of content that we found from around the web. Here's a, a path that I put together on understanding and implementing micro learning. Um, this is content that we found from different places from so this one's from eLearning, uh, the eLearning industry magazine. Here's another piece of content here on from the e-learning coach. And so essentially what these paths are, these courses, are collections of these resources that we found from around the web. And so I'm going to close both of those. Um, and so learners can go through here and they can interact with the content, they can consume the content, and then when they're done, they can mark it as complete. Um, one of the great things about the site is that because it is built on the same platform that we use as our learning management solution, um, it is essentially a light LMS. Um, and so learners can use it to track their learning. They can um, see what content they've already interacted with. Uh, they can uh, resume where they left off, which is really fantastic. Um, and so a lot of the content that we have here is reflective of the needs of our clients. So you'll see across the top there is a, uh, a navigation bar. So we've organized the content into different topic areas, management and leadership, business skills, training and development, you can see those here. Again, these are mainly reflective of the needs of our clients, but we also hope that they're reflective of the needs of the public. And that's something that I do want to emphasize here is that this is a platform that we've built for the public. It's a passion project. It's something that uh, my CEO had a vision for a couple of years ago. He really wanted to provide this platform where anyone could find the information that they needed to be successful in work and in life. And he wasn't sure how to pull this platform together. And so that's when they approached me. I was at the, the Georgia Public Library Service. I was the head of training there. And so, um, so they kind of convinced me to come over and work with them on this project to help democratize the information that's available online and to help people find exactly what it is they need so you can browse through here and you can see uh, different pieces of content. This is a podcast, for example. Uh, we're just linking out to the different pieces of content that are available. Um, and I'll show you in a minute how to build a path using the site. Um, 
One of the things that uh, we believe in is that people across the world, everyone has an, an expertise in something. And what we hope is that people will use the site to share, to share their expertise with the world. One of the things that we've done is we've reached out to people who are experts in their field, who are influencers, professors, authors, uh, even some celebrities. And we've asked them to contribute some of their favorite resources. So this is a path from Alexa Carlin, uh, a nationally re renowned speaker. Um, and so you, she wrote this uh, path description. She shared with us the links that she thought would be the best ones to help someone be a public speaker. And the idea is that when someone consumes all of the content in this path, that they will know more than they did, more about public speaking than they did before they started. Again, our goal here is to help people be better at work and in life. Some of the paths from our celebrities, we include links to like their Twitter site or um, their, their personal website, whatever the case may be. So you can close that and then let's go back to the homepage. We've featured content from a lot of different people, a lot of different uh, celebrities or influencers. We call them we call them celebrities because we think that uh, they're kind of elevated at that level. Um, each one has a different topic that they've identified and a different topic that they've um, built their path around. And so, whether it's Kristen Hadid's uh, failing well or maybe um, the basics of B2B marketing strategy. Again, the idea is that someone could go through this path and, um, and learn a little bit more from this expert about what it is uh, they're an expert in. We put together quite a bit of content on things like emotional intelligence and um, communication and customer service because Again, that's something that our clients needed. One of the things that we've done is we've integrated this catalog into the LMS of our clients so that they have access to all of this content without having to go to CatCat. I say all of that to say um, people can still navigate through CatCat as an individual. They can track their learning through my library. They can see what they're currently working on. Um, they can uh, take a look at some things that they've completed. So on the screen, you can see a lot of content that I've either viewed or passed, for example, if I've completed something. Um, and so as far as the learner is concerned, I believe that there's a lot of content here that you can use for not just your uh, staff, but also for your, uh, your, the public. This is a great resource to share if someone is looking for resources on, since I landed on communication, how to be a public speaker, or being assertive, or managing a global team. There are lots of different resources here, over 100 different paths on all of these different topics. And so the site, again, is, is public and freely available. So you can take these links and you can share them on your site. Um, you can share them on your social media platforms. Um, some libraries that we've worked with in the past have included these links uh, on a page of, you know, perhaps other resources about a specific topic. Um, I feel like I've spoken um, kind of continuously for the past two hours. So uh, I'll, we'll go ahead and pause and see if anyone has any questions. I can't see the, uh, the chat window, Courtney, so. Um, nothing yet. Nothing yet, okay. No, that's totally fine. Yeah, I don't see anyone typing. Okay, cool. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we were finding is that consistently across the board, our clients were having issues finding content on um, the same types of topics. So 
things like um, hiring someone or uh, em uh, employee like performance reviews, uh, conducting job interviews. These are topics that really ran the the span of our clients and were kind of universally needed. And so again, we thought the public could really benefit from this. Um, it's not just people who are uh, inside an organization that we provide a service to. It's, it's essentially everyone. Anyone in an organization probably has had an opportunity to interview someone. And so having content like this could really benefit them. Early on, we partnered with some libraries to uh, put together some paths that were very library specific. So things like um, uh, conducting a reference interview. That was one that was fairly popular. Another one was how to uh, go through the library construction process. And I actually partnered with the public library, the state agency here in Georgia, to pull together some resources that would help someone who was going through that process. Uh, maybe it was uh, understanding design or understanding like the um, uh, the procurement process, something along those lines. And so you can build these paths in different sections uh, and have something uh, in each section that you're focused on specifically. So this guy, uh, Chester Elton, um, decided to kind of put his content together in, in these sections. So why the best team wins, they're coached and encouraged, they're engaged and connected. Um, and so each one kind of focuses on that. With the libraries, we wanted content that was uh, focused on staff training topics, but then also on patron training topics. And so we also put together some paths on things like how to start a small business. Um, one of the things that I saw when I was working at the library at the reference desk is that people would have the same question kind of over and over again. Um, and so maybe it was how to start a small business. Um, I would get that question and then I would get it again and, you know, maybe six months down the road and I would have to kind of do all that research all over again. The idea with this platform is that you can put those paths together as a guide for, for a, uh, a patron. I almost called them a client, but you can put them together as a guide for a patron um, so that they can access this maybe when the library is closed or you can access it and provide them with this list of resources that is that's already been pulled together um, and that you can uh, you can then share with them and have it as a standalone kind of almost like a libguide i don't want to necessarily use that term i know a lot of people do have libguides this is very similar we've gotten that question before this is very similar but um, again, a free tool open to the public, not just library specific. The paths that I'm referencing that were library specific, we ended up taking down off the site because what we were finding um, is that they weren't necessarily the, um, the most in-demand topics. Um, they weren't necessarily the topics that everyone wanted to see. And so we did take them down, but I say all of that to let you know that they're still, they're actually still on the back end, like they're still, they still exist. Uh, and so if you would like to see any of those, please just shoot me an email. Um, and we can also, we can reactivate them. If we start to see that enough people are asking those same kind of, asking for those same kinds of resources, we can pull those back up. Um, a lot of this content also, again, could be used for not just uh, staff training, but then also patron training. Um, things like how to start a startup if you had someone come in and, um, and, and had a question about that. It's great because this resource, it's a list of resources that it, that's already available. I do want to show you how to create your own path, and I think that's really where kind of the power of the site comes in. Um, again, we believe that everyone is an expert in something. Um, and so the, the idea is that you can share that expertise with the world. Like that's kind of our, um, our I don't want to say our purpose, but we, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, 
something that we feel like we owe to the world to share with other people, uh, the areas that we're an expert in. And we hope that other people will feel the same way. So if you wanted to build your own path, you could do that really easily. So first thing you have to do is sign in. I'm already signed in. Uh, and you can create a free account on the site. So when you uh, come to the site, there will be a, a login button here and you can click that and then create your own path, uh, create your own account. After that, you can come here to this uh, red plus sign. And if you click that, you'll come to, it's just a blank course. Um, and you can create it, uh, you can create a course on really anything that you'd like. Again, our purpose is to help people be better at work and in life. And so all of our content is focused on that specific, um, that it's kind of under that lens, right? And so, uh, but I've seen people create paths on things like, we had someone curate a path on GMOs one time, which I thought was interesting. Um, we had a professor who curated a path on, um, he used it to share resources with his, with his class after uh, the class was over. So he just sent them the link to the path and then um, they could read, watch, and listen all of the resources that he had shared with them. So if we wanted to build a path here on, say, uh, building a reference interview, maybe I would like my staff members to go through this path. Maybe they need a little brush up on, on something related to the reference interview. I also use this for like library assistants who had never been on the desk before. And so I'm just gonna type in just some gibberish here. So you can give your path a description, which generally would include uh, not just gibberish, but also um, learning objectives, why someone would take the path, what they're going to get out of it. Um, generally, just kind of your normal like course description kind of thing. You can have different sections here uh, in the path. And so maybe we're gonna do like, what's a reference interview? And give your section a description. And then the next thing you do is add activities. So activities are links. They're always links, at least for now, although we are talking about allowing people to do more than just a link. Um, maybe write a post, for example, kind of like a blog post. Uh, I found this, uh, the steps of the reference interview. I just pulled a couple things really quickly this morning, so this might not be the best uh, resource. Um, but um, so I pulled this resource and I'm gonna click add. And then what the system does is it actually pulls the metadata from this item. And, um, and then in a second, it will pre-populate some of the content. So it will pop up this title. Um, it will, um, on the kind of on the back end, it will pop up the description if there is one. And on this one, there, there wasn't one. But if we go back, we can edit that activity and include a description for it. So I'm going to say the reason that I think people should read this article um, to give it some context. And we think that that's generally a best practice when you're curating a path like this. Uh, when you select an item, giving someone an idea of why, I can't talk and write at the same time, giving someone an idea of, of why you've selected that piece of content for them is really beneficial, A, so that they don't skip it, and uh, B, so that they have kind of an idea of what to look for as they're going through. So I'm gonna say this article gives a great overview. We can also specify in minutes how long the, uh, it would take to consume that content. Generally, I estimate the number of minutes it takes to read something. For a YouTube video, this would pre-populate. And so, um, you know, maybe it might say three or four minutes. Uh, so I'm just gonna say three minutes here for this article. You can also specify a difficulty level, which um, I'll show you in a few minutes how we can kind of um, use that to select different things. Um, you can also select a cover image and a preview image. And you can also add some topics. 
So you'll see here our topics are fairly limited. Again, uh, we used to have like a library catalog, but or a library topic, but we um, we took that one away. It might come back. Um, so right now, I'm just going to say this is. I'm going to say communication for right now. You can also specify the publisher, the author, and the published date in the event that that information is available. Again, it's going to pull whatever is available um, from the metadata. Apparently, there's not much here to pull, so I'm just going to say Iowa wrote this. And you don't have to fill these fields in. All right, so I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go back to my path. Let's add another activity. Um, just to have some another uh, URL to pull, I'm going to pull this one from the ALA. And again, this one is uh, the guidelines for behavioral performance of reference and information service providers. So, um, and then let's pull a video. So I went ahead and I found this. It's just a reference interview video. Um, I think that a uh, a grad school had put together. I'm going to add that URL. All right, let's look at the metadata for this one. OK, so it pulls the title. It's got this little description here. That description doesn't wouldn't necessarily make any sense for anyone. So I'm going to say this video is a good overview. I think that's what I said for the last one. Uh, you can specify again the duration of minutes, which it went ahead and pulled. I'm going to say it has beginner level. Um, we have a service called Embedly that will display the activity link. Um, what, one thing that we found is that while Embedly is fantastic at uh, pulling some additional metadata, it actually it, it renders the page slowly. And so uh, we leave this box unchecked. Then I'm going to select communication. I'm going to leave this author because I think it's hilarious. I'm going to click save. OK. So you can see here we've got a couple of items in the path already. I'm going to add a topic and specify a difficulty level. Now, at this point, if I think that my path is done, I can add, um, well, I would want to add a hero image, um, which is like the, the big picture at the top, and a cover art, which is the picture that displays in the catalog. Um, not going to do that now. And then for me, I have these admin functions, some things like feature on the Discover tab, uh, which will display it for our clients, which I don't want to do right now, um, but I'm going to do it anyway uh, so they can see it for just a hot second. Um, okay, I think that looks good. All right, and so I'm going to submit. Well, right now this button says submit for review. Our developers are working on a process that will allow people to just automatically publish things. We think that it's important for people to be able to publish their paths and then be able to see them, share them, uh, and be able to kind of get that instant gratification. So if I say submit for review, this is what my path is going to look like. You see, I didn't upload a header image, so it's not very pretty. Um, but you can, you can see how it would look for the student. And then these are the links that we uploaded. So here's the State Library of Iowa. I'm going to really quickly um, go back. I'm going to edit my path, and I'm going to unpublish it just so that no one else can see it. Sure, like Google right now is like, why do I have this path on the reference interview in my catalog? Um, so we don't want that to happen. Um, Again, someone can come through here. Um, you can have your staff members uh, read through the content, mark things as complete. The videos will auto-complete. So if I click on that, um, as you watch the video, you don't need to do anything else uh, specifically. It will just automatically realize that you're done with the video and then mark it as complete. And then when you're com when you're finished with uh, that path, it will have uh, this banner at the top that says that you passed it on whatever date. So you can go and view it in your history, and you can see that uh, you passed this reference interview class. 
you can also see the content that you've added um, in my library, which you can get to from that banner that you had seen um, when you finished the path, or you can get to it from this hamburger menu here. So discover is the homepage. My library is the page that has your history, anything that you've favorited, um, anything that you have uh, completed and anything you've added. Another thing that's in this hamburger menu I, uh, is the about page. And so we've put some information here about what CatCat -Cat is, what our mission is, why we're doing it. Um, this page will change in uh, just a few weeks. So you might see something that's a little bit different, but essentially this page is just to help people orient them to kind of what what everyday online learning looks like right now, which we don't think is, is right. Um, and then orient them to obviously to CatCat. In the future, this page will have information for learners and then information for curators. So if you wanted to be a curator and you wanted to contribute to the site, it would have some specific information and some training for you on how to do that. Right now, when you click on this plus button, there's you know not necessarily a whole lot that that tells you what to do and where to go. It's fairly self-explanatory, but we'd like for it to be a little bit more uh, user friendly. That's actually a good uh, point that I'd like to make as well, and that's that this platform has changed dramatically since we launched it unofficially, kind of like a soft launch back in June. Um, it's already changed so much, and we have some really big changes coming in uh, in the next few weeks. One is that people will be able to publish without um, having to submit their path for review. The um, some of the other changes we will implement include um, the way that people review paths, the way that people um, not just publish them, but also kind of the steps that they go through um, in order to publish that path. Okay, I'm going to stop for questions here. Courtney, do we have any? I don't have any coming in. If anyone has any questions, feel free to go ahead and type those in the chat box now. I'm just kind of curious what kind of topics yeah. are covered on those um, library specific paths that you mentioned that were kind of available on the back end. Do you have any? Um, yes. So a couple of them were um, here. I'm actually I'm going to kind of poke through in the admin view. Um, some things like um, the uh, reference interview was one. Um, oh, how to do library displays was another one that we did. Um, so conducting a reference interview. Let's see what other paths we have. Um, library customer service, which was another one that we had like put together. Uh, for our friends kind of in the library world who, you know, we we had all been managers at a library before. And so we all had experienced kind of this need to, to train some of our staff on customer service. You know, it's not something that, I don't know, every library is different, but for us, um, oops, for us, it was really important that um, our libraries were like overly customer friendly. Um, and so like we live in the land of Chick-fil-A, right? Where they're known for their customer service, where, let me go back and find that path, um, where people are, it's the South, you know, I'm in Atlanta, you expect kind of this like Southern charm and so uh, we definitely wanted to uh, per, um, personify that and make sure that we were giving people the best service that, that they could have. So, and again, kind of like over the top, not that everyone isn't like customer service friendly, but for us, it was just something that was really, really important. Sure. We have um, a question. So this is an LMS. Um, and mm -hmm. you kind of mentioned this, it was it was kind of a light LMS. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, I say that it's a light LMS because it does all of the same things that an LMS would do. 
So it tracks a learner's um, progress through a, a course. It allows a learner to start and stop something. Um, it, uh, it allows a learner to you know, go back and see their history, that kind of thing. Um, what it doesn't allow someone to do is say, hey, uh, I have a learner or I have these learners. Can you tell me what, what they've learned or what they've completed or what they've started? Um, that is kind of this, that's what we build for our clients. Um, and so if Facebook wanted to know, hey, what, what courses have people completed? We can absolutely tell them that. Um, they can run a report to see, um, to see what their learners had completed. Um, Google, same thing. Google can go through and say, you know, what, what have people gone through? And it gives them those really deep analytics. On this, those analytics aren't available because it's not an enterprise level solution. It's designed for the public. It's designed for the individual. And so uh, the analytics are at that level. So again, if I wanted to see what I've, I've completed, that information is available to me, but wouldn't be available to anyone else. So that's Great. when I say light, that's yeah, kind of what I mean. Okay. We have another question. When the review process goes away for content submission, will the content still be vetted somehow? Yes, that is a good question. So one of the things that we're doing is um, we are getting rid of that submit for review process. So when we get rid of that, that submission process, one of the things that we're doing is we're actually working with people that we're calling topic experts. Uh, so people who have uh, expertise in, in that specific area. Again, it could be an author, a professor, but someone who has some credentials uh, and some experience in the area. Um, we're having them review the paths after they're submitted, which is scary for us to think about the fact that anyone can submit anything. Um, but we're having people uh, review these paths after they're submitted and then identify the ones that are the best. Um, and so they'll be able to mark them as featured or mark them as like kind of reviewed by, a, by an expert. And then you'll be able to see that information next to the path. Maybe it'll have like a little badge or a little picture that's like a little check mark, kind of like Twitter does with their verified profiles. Um, that would be like a verified path. Um, we yeah. have another question here. Okay. Um, have you noticed heavier usage on mobile or desktop? So right now, um, we it's optimized for desktop. Um, our we tend to design mobile first, and um, any of our other platforms are really fantastic on on mobile. CatCat, because of the nature of what it is, it works on mobile. But if you can imagine, um, you, you're, you're looking at CatCat and then you click on this and then it takes you to this page and then it opens up a new tab and then you read that article or like listen to that, um, listen to that podcast and then you've got to close it and then it goes back to that page. It's not necessarily the best mobile experience. And we say that knowing that we need to do some work in that area. Um, some of our clients are essentially mobile only. Uh, Waffle House actually is a great example of that. Um, they have people who are out in the field and uh, the only time they can learn is when they're on the job, but they're on their feet, they're in the restaurant, they don't have a computer in front of them. And so learning mobily is is the only way that they can do it. And so we see really high mobile usage from them. I think that we would see high mobile usage from CatCat if like once, if, if it were optimized for that experience. Uh, we have another question. Do you have any advice on maintaining the content? So one of the things that we do is we contract with uh, a service that provides us uh, information about dead links. So that's something that's really uh, important for us. We also have a feature where you can report, maybe um, you can flag something that says, oh, it, you know, it contains broken links or maybe the content is incorrect. Uh, we review these flags. So we, we're relying on the community to tell us if the uh, content is old or if the content is no good. 
Um, and so we do go and review those. We also look, a lot of people will add stars or leave reviews um, for specific links. And so that will show us that, um, that will give us an indicator. That's a, a signal for us that something is, uh, something is amiss. Um, the other thing that we do is we, we, we regularly go through, I wish that there was another way to do this, but we regularly manually go through each path and we'll identify resources that uh, maybe are out of date or could be better. I, I just found some articles that I added to a path that I had curated maybe a year ago. And these were really good articles that I just, like I hadn't found when I was doing the original curation. And so um, I just, I can go, and, and you can do this as well. You can just uh, visit your path that you'd like to change and then edit, edit that path. And then it will um, bring up all of these different options for you. So you can, you can edit that path if you'd like. But yeah, that's a really great question. And I wish that there was a way to do it where it wasn't manual. Okay, we have one more here. Any thoughts on converting CatCat -Cat into an app? Yeah, um, so because this is our passion project, um, there are so many things that we want to do, but it's not bringing in any money. So it's hard to uh, justify spending a lot of development time on doing things like building an app. Like we really want to build an app. We really want it to be mobile friendly. Um, unfortunately, we have, even though we have an entire team of people who are dedicated to building apps, um, and to making sites mobile friendly, they're focused on things like, you know, like like Blueprint or like Academy for Ads. Um, and so there are apps for both of those. And um, if we if they have some spare time, hopefully they can build one for CatCat. Cat. That's Great. another, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, that's ahead. the last question we have here. Oh, okay, cool. I think that's another uh, important point as well is that because this is our passion project, it um, there are some features and functions that we would love to have, and we just it just hasn't happened yet because because of the fact that um, it, it's something that we we get designated development time kind of towards the end of the quarter when they're wrapping when our developers are wrapping up some other things that. Uh, that they that they needed to do and then they've got some time to work on the things that they that they want to do um, and so there are so many different features and functions that we would like to see and most of them have come from either our own use of the platform or from people who we've uh, reached out to uh, who have used the platform and we've you know just asked them like what what would you like to see that kind of user feedback has been really valuable for us and so if you do see something that you think uh, would would be better. We would definitely love to have that information and um, and and be able to kind of put that on our roadmap. I say roadmap with like it's not it's less of a, a it's more of a wish list than a roadmap. But um, let's see, what other questions do you have? Let's see, we have another one coming in. What about copyright issues? Can we link anything we find on the internet to a path? Yeah, that is another really great question. Um, there are no copyright issues because you're linking out. We're not storing anything on our site. We're not embedding anything. We are linking to the, like the, um, the resource itself. And because we're linking to, to that resource, again, we don't have to worry about copyright issues. Uh, we, uh, if anything, people should be happy that we're driving traffic to their site. And they should be happy that we're featuring their site in a way that is reaching millions of people. Um, so, so far we haven't, we haven't had anyone complain, but I don't think that they would again, because it's something that's, it's good for them. And it looks like that's it for questions. Okay. Well, I thought I would take a few minutes and just um, talk to you a little bit about kind of how I put a path together. And we've got a few more minutes um, left. And so I wanted to share with you a process that I use. And I call it the ADSI model. If you 
are like me, kind of a, an instructional design geek, you might know the Addy model. So the Addy model is this iterative process that you use to build a course. So analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Um, and so I took out the development step for that and added in this curate step in order to build a course that, um, that is based off of curated content. And so um, when we look at the curation process, it's something that um, I think it's something that we do as librarians, as library staff on a regular basis. Uh, we do it kind of without necessarily without explaining how we do it or, or I, there's a certain set of skills that we have as library staff that um, other people in say corporate America don't have so um, that we've that we've just developed over the years right um, so we are able to pull together resources we're able to um, evaluate those resources in a way uh, that um, that that makes that makes sense. We're able to look at things like the authority of a piece of content, the validity, the currency, the coverage. So all of these different characteristics of a piece of content, these are things that I look at when I am looking for content to add to the system. And so it's, it's just like building a collection um, out of web links. You're pulling them together, you're evaluating them, you're organizing them in a way that makes sense. I like to say that we're building a cohesive instructional narrative. We are putting the content together in a sequence that makes sense for the learner. And so, you know, we want to include introductory content at the beginning. We want to include more intermediate stuff in the middle, more advanced stuff at the end. We want to make sure that different topics are uh, explained earlier on. Say if something is mentioned in a later article, do we have something earlier that explains what that is? Um, and so when I say cohesive instructional narrative, that's kind of what I mean. Like, does it tell that story? And so we want to organize it in that way. Um, I want to go back to CatCut really quickly and um, just mention, let's see. Um, oh, mention that you can go to uh, all topics. Um, and so you can actually browse everything that we have uh, curated so far. And so far, this is all uh, content that has been either community developed or uh, comes from our celebrities or that comes from our, um, our own staff. So it's all stuff that's been vetted. It's all stuff that's been um, evaluated. I think that our developers will be able to release their uh, the new like workflow for for curation so that you'll be able to submit something without review. Uh, I think that they'll be able to do that either this week or next week. And we have releases on Thursdays, so that's when the site will change. Um, and so again, you might see some changes uh, tomorrow or next week if you visit the site and you start to curate. You might see that you don't have to submit for review. That button will actually say publish. So um, I do want to just answer any other questions that you guys have about the site, about our purpose, about why we're doing this. If you have any questions, go ahead and type those in the chat box. I'm not seeing anything come in now. Um, while we do that and as we're wrapping up, I'm going to go ahead and put up your LEU um, link on the uh, page here. If you have any questions that require uh, Julia to go through some things on online, I'll switch back, but I want to make sure everybody gets their LEU. Um, there at the top, you can go ahead and download the LEU, and then there's also a web link um, to a survey monkey there um, about in the middle of the page. If you could please fill that out, let us know how we're doing. And then there at the bottom is Julia's contact information. If you have any uh, questions, maybe you think about after the presentation, uh, feel free to get with her. Um, Julia and I will stay uh, here in the presentation or in the Adobe Connect room um, in case any questions come up for a few more minutes here. Um, otherwise, make sure you do get your LEUs and fill out that survey for us.